Therefore, less time devices, uh, as you know, is the term that we use to refer to firewall load balancer intrusion prevention systems. And you can integrate them with ACI in two main ways. One is the classic networking connectivity, uh, which means using VLANs, and in ACI means using bridge domains uh, or VRFs to create the forwarding path. Uh, and that's the classic way of connecting layer 4, layer 7 devices. Or you can use service graph redirect, new compared to uh, the classic way of integrating services. And this feature is also referred to as service graph with PBR, with policy-based redirect. Uh, whereas for the first mode of integration, which is the classic VLAN stitching, we call it EPG mode oftentimes. Create EPGs, just like you would do for normal uh, servers. Differently from integrating just a server, you would also create an EPG to connect the load balancer. This is then configured by creating also a contract between the EPGs of the servers and the EPG where the load balancer or the firewall is connected. This is a illustration of uh, the service graph redirect integration. So the main difference are the fact that the load balancer or the firewall don't need to be on the same bridge domain where the servers are. The load balancer or firewalls are effectively outside of the main routing and bridging path. And ACI allows you to forward traffic through the firewall path, either for entire traffic or for a subset of the traffic. So what are the pros and cons of uh, each mode? Well, the VLAN stitching or VRF sandwiching by using EPGs is the easiest way to migrate from an existing network. And it offers the same flexibility as classic networks. Using VLAN stitching or VRF sandwiching with service graph doesn't add a lot of value to the manual VLAN stitching or EPG mode. It requires understanding the service graph model, so it's slightly more complex. Using service graph with redirect option or with PBR mode, which is the same, requires a little bit more learning. For migration, it requires some work to redesign, of course, but it offers, in terms of flexibility, the best approach. So um, looking at this from a um, high level chart perspective, there is the option to do, let's say, VLAN BD stitching or VRF sandwiching in two different ways. One is the EPG mode, the other one is with service graph, or you can use service graph with redirect mode. This mode is definitely the best for greenfield deployments because it offers so many features and flexibility and so on. This mode is the best for migration because it's very easy to map existing networks to, uh, to the ACI infrastructure. So let's talk about choosing the right deployment model. First, you need to understand which traffic flows you want to protect with the firewall. Is it north to south? Is it east to west? Are there lo devices located in multiple data centers? Do you need to deploy a layer one firewall or a layer two firewall or a routed firewall? Uh, which device should be the default gateway, uh, which chain model you want to use. And if it's a load balancer, how do you want to handle the return traffic? Uh, is the VIP address on the same subnet as the load balancer interfaces? So you need to ask yourself all these different questions. So let's take a look first at the firewall design options. Uh, let's start from classic uh, networks before ACI. So you could deploy um, firewall in layer two mode between two different VLANs. That's the VLAN stitching mode. You could have firewall as a default gateway for the servers, or you could have the firewall sandwiched between VRFs, or you could even use uh, policy-based routing. So how can we map these options to ACI? Let's take a look at the layer two firewall with VLAN stitching. So this is what you would have in a classic network, and this is how you would map it to ACI. So you would create a VRF, you would have two bridge domains, and the default gateway it would be ACI behind the firewall. So it would be the, the BD firewall external with the IP address, which would be the default gateway for the servers. Traditional VLAN stitching, simple. Uh, you could also improve this by using PBR, I mean, using ACI service graph with uh, PBR, with redirect, 
which is not a one-to-one -one mapping with this, but it's 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 more interesting in terms of features to insert a layer one, layer two firewall. Okay. Uh, in terms of EPGs and contracts, you can see the details here. Let's take a look at option two, layer three firewall with the firewall as a default gateway. So this is how this would look like in ACI. Again, two BDs. This BD would just be doing layer two. And in this case, maybe ACI could be used just as a layer two device, just providing bridging. Uh, again, simple deployment, no service graph necessary, just like the previous slide. Uh, these are the contracts you would need to use. Let's take a look at option three, layer three firewall with the fabric as default gateway. And this is what sometimes is referred to as a VRF sandwich. So in ACI, you would have two VRFs, VRF one and VRF two. And then here, the difference with the previous designs is that you would use a layer three out to connect the firewall interfaces. So you would have a layer three out in and a layer three out firewall out. ACI doing routing, service graph not necessary. This is an excellent design for north to south traffic. Okay, and this is the uh, I mean this is the representation of the contracts that you would need in such a design. Option four: Layer three firewall with a fabric as a default gateway and using service graph redirect. Here you would need one VRF firewall can be on the same BD as the servers, but it doesn't have to. The firewall can be in one arm mode or two arms mode. You could also send just specific traffic to the firewall. ACI is doing the routing. This is excellent for east to west traffic. It requires to use a service graph. And yeah, again, servers and firewall can be in the same BD or different BDs. In terms of HA options, classic option, uh, active standby mode, doesn't require any service graph redirect. Now, the options that are more advanced require service graph redirect, like the active active cluster, where you could have firewalls active in different data centers, all of them active, and it's called the span interchannel mode, which works with the ASA FTD platforms. Or you could also do a, a cluster of active standby devices. So each active node is a single IP MAC entry, which could fail over to the other device. ACI provides symmetric hashing to send traffic to the same nodes in, in both directions of the traffic. Let, let's take a look at the load balancer design options. The classic is the two arm design where the load balancer is the default gateway. The other one is the two arm in line where the load balancer is in the path between two ARFs. And then the one arm mode or two arm modes where the fabric is the default gateway. So this is actually two arm. I said one arm, but it's basically the same concept as doing one arm mode. In one arm mode, you Besides using source NAT and PBR mode, you could also use a direct server return to send traffic directly from the servers to the client bypassing the load balancer. So these are the classic deployment models for load balancers. Let's take a closer look how to map them to ACI. So into our mode where the load balancer is the default gateway, you would create two BDs and then the load balancer will be the default gateway on this BD web. A load balancer and servers in this case are in the same bridge domain. ACI can be the layer three, the routing device uh, on the outside BD for the load balancer. No need for service graph, no need for source NAT, no need for PBR. Let's take a look at option two. So fabric is the default gateway. Then you, in this case, would use two different BRFs, then a layer three out connecting to the load balancer. Uh, no need for uh, source NAT, no need for policy-based uh, routing. In this case, the VIP belongs to the same BD as the outside bridge domain. Okay, so let's take a look at the option number three, which is two ARM designs with the fabric as default gateway. This is leveraging source NAT. So in this case, we have two different BDs, the BD for load balancing in and the B for load balancer out, and the BD then for the servers. In this case, you need to use source NAT or policy-based routing or policy-based redirect, I should say. Uh, ACI as the layer three uh, is providing routing for uh, the traffic and the service device can be in the same BD or in a different BD compared to the servers. Uh, now, when using policy-based routing, policy-based redirect to redirect the traffic, you need service graph. Uh, and you can also specify just center ports that need to go back to the load balancer. Option number four, one arm design with a fabric as the default gateway. Here you would need just one bridge domain and one VRF. ACI would be doing routing when using 
voice based redirect, you need service graph. Now, what if the virtual IP address is not in the load balancer interface IP subnet range? In this case, you should use um, layer three out uh, on the uh, virtual IP uh, side, on the outside of the load balancer. So you could use the, the load balancer as the gateway. So the layer three out and the bridge domain, or you could use a, um, the fabric as the gateway. In this case, uh, you need to configure a VRFs uh, sandwich. So two VRFs and two layer three out and the load balancer will attach to both uh, layer three out. Or still, uh, you could also use a service graph redirect design with the load balancer with a layer three out uh, for the VIP and an internal bridge domain for the inside uh, interface of the load balancer. So this concludes this presentation. Uh, this was an overview of the different ways to uh, deploy ACI with Lake for LSM and services. And then if you want to know more about policy-based redirect and the um, features that it offers, uh, please check the other presentations. Mm -hmm.